South African rugby, you might have just dodged a bullet if it's true that this private equity deal that looked like it was going to be going through on Thursday is actually dead in the water and is going to be voted down by the unions. I hope that is the case. And if so, like I say, breathe a sigh of relief. In my opinion, I would love to know your opinion. Tell me in the comments below. Give the video a thumbs up and I would love it if I would earn your subscription. So yeah, I know it's not a video about players and tactics and tournaments and it's off the field and it's money. But it is important, and I am speaking right now as someone in England where private equity has been, uh, and its relationship with rugby, has been an absolute disaster. And I can't quite believe that so many other people since keep going down the same path and thinking, oh, this time it will be brilliant. In pretty much every case, it's been bad. And this deal, that it looked like Saru were going to usher through on Thursday, it, I mean, it looks like a bad deal to me. So what's on the table? An American private equity firm, ASG, are offering £75 million. In exchange, Saru would hand over 20% of the commercial rights for the Springboks forevermore. Now, no one in rugby's got a lot of money at the moment, and I'm sure the South African Rugby Union, like most unions, probably got a little bit of a black hole um, of cash. And the offer of a big shiny pile of gold would have been very appealing. 20% of your commercial rights forevermore. I don't think $75 million or 1.3 billion rand is a, is a fair deal there. And especially not when you see that this new company that was going to be set up to manage the commercial rights of the Springboks was going to have a voting block on it, a majority of which were from this new company, despite the fact they only own 20%. That is a red flag to me, and if the, if the news today is true, it seems like it's a red, red flag for some of the unions as well. Now, as I mentioned, I'm sat here in England, and I've seen the, relation, the relationship between private equity and rugby absolutely... Uh, yeah, no, I don't think it's over egg in the pudding to say it's ruined the sport in this country to a degree. So what happened? 2018, CBC came to the Premiership, who all the Premiership clubs, and there were... Were there 12 or 13 of them then? I can't remember what, what it was. But in 2018, uh, CBC came to the Premiership and said, here you go, here's a load of cash. We can see you're in a bit of debt. Here's a load of money. And all we want is 27% of your commercial rights forevermore. And the Premiership, I think, the clubs, with a few debts to their name, looked at the big pile of cash and went, well, that looks nice. That, that could solve a few problems for us. Yeah, 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 where do we sign? Uh, and, they, and, they, and they signed it away and they took their money. And then we were all promised back at the time that this was going to lead to the Premiership being a global powerhouse. It was going to be a billion pound league. And oh, the, we're heading to the stratosphere with this new deal. And there were a lot of people saying this was brilliant. It was a good thing. It was great. Thing is, I, I mean, there's a record of it. I've got a podcast which shows from day one, I said this would be a disaster. And this was a terrible move. So I, I can prove that that's what I said. There's a lot of people that have been backtracking over the last six years, forgetting what they said six years ago. And fine, it's only come to light how bad it was. I thought it was going to be obvious, going to be a bad deal. But what is true is that all of the promises about how big the premiership was going to be as a result have not materialised. And instead, what happened? The premiership clubs wiped out a load of their debt, spent that money, and then they had to exist on a smaller amount. Because when that TV money comes through, 27% of that money goes off to CBC. And what they were expecting or maybe hoping was that the TV deals were going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. In actual fact, the TV deals got smaller. So not only are they getting less money because the TV deals are smaller, they have to hand over a quarter of that money over to CBC. At the same time, the cost to put the lights on at the stadium have gone up because of energy bills. Salaries haven't gone down. Uh, paying staff still costs the same. you still got to market the sport. It's led to a spiral where the clubs have all spent the money they got and now they're back in debt again. We've had three clubs go bust and there's a genuine danger that there might be other clubs that are on the brink. That's what private equity money has done in England. And it's, it's not just in England. New Zealand did a private equity deal with Silver Lake, an American company. And 
what they found is that they were at the time when they signed the deal, they were saying this is going to kickstart the, the All Blacks to be a global brand worth way more money than they are currently and we're all going to share in the spoils. What's actually happened is they took the money from Silver Lake, they've spent it, it's nearly run out and now when they get money in, which isn't as high as they thought it was going to be, they're going to have to hand a chunk of it over to Silver Lake so they end up with less than they had before they started. And it's the same with the Six Nations, it's the same with what is now the URC but what was the Pro 14. Short term cash but long term it actually makes your life harder which is why we're having all these conversations. About, well, it's part of the reason why no one's able to get around a table and solve rugby's problems long term because everybody's just scrabbling over what little bit of money they can get right now because it's not in, it's not in great shape. Interestingly, the top 14 is going gangbusters, making loads of cash. No private equity there. On to South Africa. So for the reasons I, I explained, I, th I think it was a bad deal. And I'm hoping that it is the case that the unions are going to shoot this one down on Thursday and say, go away, or at the very least, go away and come back with something better because that's a dodgy deal. But just on South Africa generally. Now, as if you've been following the channel for a little while now, you'll know I spent, uh, what, five and a half, six weeks in South Africa over the last few months. My first ever trips to the country, which was off the back of being there at the Rugby World Cup, seeing there, I was there on the night in Paris when they won the World Cup final, spent loads of time with Springbok fans when I was in France, and that made me want to go, hold on, I need to go to this country. What is it about rugby in South Africa? And this is my point. I get a load of comments uh, on the channel. When I speak to people, when I spoke to people in South Africa, I get so many people saying they've really enjoyed seeing their country through the eyes of someone who's not from their country, me in, the, in, in this case. So let me do the same thing now. Let me just remind South Africa of what it has. It, there is a relationship and, um, yeah, a relationship with rugby which is so rare and special that I don't, I don't know how you put a value on it because to me, it's near priceless. It's like nothing else on earth. The depth of feeling, the depth of passion, the relationship between the, the sporting national team and the people, its relationship between communities, the connection with schools and clubs and provinces, it's unreal. I was at Craven Week and to see that blew my mind. But then the schools rugby, the Pal Derby blew my mind. To see, and it sounds like a small thing, but it's not a small thing, to see absolutely everybody in Ellis Park, in Kings Park, in uh, Loftus Versfeld and at the Cape Town Stadium, to see everyone in green and gold in the crowd blew my mind. There is something so rare and special about rugby in South Africa that it's so valuable and it needs to be preserved and and nurtured and not just given away to people outside of the country who might just be saying they look like they're in a bit of a financial hole we could probably swing ourselves a good deal because that is what i think is going on honestly yes the rand is weak compared to other currencies now yes there's problems in south africa rassi erasmus said on chasing the sun we're the only thing that works <laughs> in our country uh, yes, I saw poverty. Yes, I saw infrastructure issues. Yes, to all of those things. But don't sell the family silver. Hold on to that because in years to come, when some of those things which are problems now aren't problems in the future, you, you will regret selling the family silver now to wipe out a, a, a debt now but lose out on so much value in the future. So if you want to look after South African rugby, stay well away, in my humble opinion, stay well away from private equity deal, which is I hope if this story is correct and the unions are saying this doesn't look good, that looks like it may be what's about to happen. If so, that's a good thing. Um, I'd love to know what you think. Like I say, it's a strange one, isn't it? Because I'm not talking about games, players, tactics or anything like that i'm just talking about cash um but th these conversations in rugby need to be had and in my opinion deals like this one that's on the table 
need to be avoided. I'll see you on the next video.